open mic night from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. here at the South Point Community Center so people could talk about problems with the judicial system in the state of Maine, guardian ad litems, and certain judges that uh, seem to be working outside judicial rules. Now, uh, is this a, is this a, a regular uh, meeting occurrence or are there plans for that? This was brought together since Monday of this week, today's Friday. We plan on having additional meetings with more people. Hopefully we'll gather more people that are interested in finding out how they can protect themselves in the court system and what they should look for and what they should try to avoid. We don't want people to go into a pro se proceedings without knowing that the judge has ruled against litigants 78 consecutive times, whether they're uh, plaintiffs or defendants. They need to know what they're up against when they get into a, a judge's courtroom. Now, um, uh, could you uh, talk about, or at least uh, uh, mention some of the uh, organizations that might be sponsoring this organization? This is un unsponsored by any any group. Uh, I, I'm Michael Doyle. I own FelmaToday.me. I'm here at the request of several people. They asked me to help moderate the, uh, the meetings along with some other people that are involved. But uh, this is not a organizational meeting. This is a meeting spontaneously held to bring people together that have like kinds of problems with the system. And hopefully we can get it organized and have a, a newsletter that goes out uh, by email on a regular basis, more meetings, more people, and find out other things that are going on. But right now we're, we're just in the infant stage of getting this organized. I think that's a possibility uh, to have a lobbying uh, approach to this. But what we like to do is, is have an educational approach to legislators. For example, in the last 24 hours, I found out how much money guardian and items get paid. And it's just unbelievable amounts of money. They take entire paychecks from people, leaving them nothing in their bank account to live on. I was told this story this morning by somebody who's going through paying back all the money he owes his guardian at like for his child uh, uh, custody dispute. This is something that just can't keep going on. He told me, he says, this is driving people underground, not to have above ground uh, payrolls where they can be attached because who can live on zero? And he says, to get the people from out, out from under the underground economy, if you stop working, they take your driver's license so you can't get to your off-the-books job to make money to live on. So it's, it's a terrible catch-22 where people can't get enough money to live on. It's taken by the system. And then when they go underground, their license is taken so they can't even get to the job to support themselves or make payments for child support or anything else. It's just it's the uh, total catch-22 situation. People are stymied at every turn trying to survive in the state of Maine. My pleasure. Thank you, come from just so we have some idea what's talking. Thank you. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm from Portland. I originally was not going to speak, but after I heard your story, it was so similar to mine. Um, I was married 20 years. I have four daughters. I stayed home for 17 years. I nursed, did 4-H. We were, you know, I was an active in every club with my girls. And when the marriage fell apart, um, I was just completely naive. I never dreamed that my ex-husband would go for custody, and I never dreamed that he would get custody because he worked full-time. I stayed home. I mean, the girls and I were inseparable all the time. And I went into the court system, Judge Moskowitz. Uh, um, they called in a, a guardian at litem. It was Elizabeth Stout. It was like fish in a barrel. I went in there, and I was just... I didn't expect half of what was going to happen, and Judge Moskowitz was just this unusual. He was impatient. He was rude. Um, he was intimidating. Um, Elizabeth Stout came into the house. She interviewed me a few times. She basically did not like my boyfriend, who's now my husband. Um, that was 
what her driving factor was to side with my ex-husband. When we went to court, um, when we'd have a recess, she'd go out and hug my ex-husband's family. You know, it, it, she definitely wasn't on my side. She wasn't down the middle. She was hugging his family. She was glaring at me through the court process. Um, my four daughters, they weren't two babies either. They were 11, 15, 16, and 17. So thinking the older girls, you know, that he couldn't make them, make the older girls stay with their dad, um, the judge, when, when this all came about and he gave custody to my ex-husband and I could see them every other weekend, four days a month, which when you're home with your children every day, four days a month is nothing. Um, I started picking the girls up for breakfast in the morning at the bus stop. We'd go and get bagels and coffee. And my ex-husband got really upset by this. So he took me back to court. And Judge Moskowitz was so angry by the fact that I wasn't following exactly every four, every other weekend. He said, if you break this agreement again, you're going to be put in jail for 90 days. No ifs, ands, or buts. 90 days for breaking the um the divorce decree, and he, you know, banged his gavel and he walked off, and I was just shocked. So my then lawyer said, "Well, you better not pick them up, and you can't see them on these days." And they couldn't; they'd come over, they'd show up as teenager girls, they'd pull in the driveway and come over. So I lived under this fear for one year that I was going to jail until my new lawyer stepped in, <coughs> and she went over this whole case, and she said, "This isn't even legal. He can't throw you in jail for this." And she, she got all the paperwork together. She presented it to him. He read it. He never said a word. He never said, yes, it's true. No, it's not. But he never threatened me with it again. Um, so as each child turned 17, they moved in with me and my husband, one after another after another. Um, and it, the driving force behind this was the guardian, it was Elizabeth Stout. She was just, she, the judge asked her, Elizabeth, do you think Mr. My ex-husband is prepared to take on four teenage girls. And she kind of laughed. She goes, is anybody prepared to take on four girls? And he goes, oh, that's true, yeah. I mean, I had been with them their whole life. They were devastated. They'd call me crying. Then I couldn't go get them anymore because I was afraid they'd be in jail for 90 days. And I said to the judge, you know I carry the insurance for them. I, I work part-time for this insurance. You didn't want to hear it? I said, if you put me in jail, I can't. I can't give them their insurance. He still didn't, he didn't care. He was just so angry that I was seeing the girls on the off days that, you know, this whole year, for a good year, year and a half, I thought I'll go to prison if they showed up. So they'd come over for dinner and then they'd leave quickly just in case it would get to my ex-husband that the girls were at the house for supper. And they were just, they were devastated. My youngest has had depression. She was, and now this has all been thrown out. Last year, the new, my new lawyer went in and all of it was thrown out. The kids have all come and moved in with me. They were just, I, I never dreamed for not doing anything wrong as a mom, I could lose custody because my ex-husband had a much better lawyer and he was really just driving this because he wanted to get back at me for the divorce. That was, but the Judge Moskowitz was rude, intimidating. He too fined me $8,000 for uh, my ex-husband lawyer fees for one court hearing and for 10 months I wrote to him and I asked him could you you know can I just talk to you about this amount it seems huge eight thousand dollars I didn't spend that in two years with my lawyer so he's had me in court with my ex-husband's lawyer and I just said you know I think this amount is really ballooned and he's, he says I looked it over and I've decided it's fine and maybe this will stop you from coming into my court and I was like Yep, that's the same thing he said to me. He um, he was just intimidating, you know, when you go in there. And both um, Elizabeth Stout and um, Judge Moskowitz, they, when, at one point when I was trying to speak, he said, whatever Elizabeth says, I believe and I'm going with. And I only met her like three or four times. And all the children who were all late teens and getting ready to graduate asked to speak with the judge in chambers to discuss that they want to be with their mom. I don't want to speak with them. I don't want them in this courtroom. I don't want to hear this. And this is what everything he said. I don't want to hear this because he didn't think it was a place for kids. I said, but they're, they're all pushing 18. They're not babies. Um, they wanted to write letters to him. My lawyer, my first lawyer said, no, that's not a good idea. I wouldn't do that. You'll upset him. Don't upset him. So I was just, I walked out of there shocked. 
had to pack up. They were all crying. And it was it was unbelievable. I, I, I actually told my sister, I said, she said, I heard your ex-husband Joe's going for custody. And I said, oh, you have to, this is my opinion. I said, you'd have to be a crack addict or a crack prostitute to lose your kids. This is what I truly thought. Well, she told my ex-husband and the judge said, did you say this? And I went, yeah. And that just, you could tell, he didn't, he, that angered him. And that was, you know, three, four years of back and forth in court, back and forth and just, it was a nightmare. But um, Elizabeth was a terrible guardian. It was so scary. Thank you.